Good morning, everyone. We gather this Advent day, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. To prepare ourselves once again to worthily come to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we pause to acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, the one proclaimed by prophets of old, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, the one heralded by John, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord our God, as we await the advent of Christ your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain <clears throat> and raised above the hills. All nations shall, shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and impose terms on many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city with compact unity, to it the tribes go up the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks in the name <clears throat> to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good.
Enter Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be saved. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet of the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. As we begin Advent, we meet the centurion soldier, unnamed, outsider, not Jewish, part of the Roman authority. And uh, this unnamed outsider is uh, known for all of eternity for his great trust. We quote him at every Mass as we come forward just before to receive Eucharist. We'll Say, Lord, I am not worthy for you to enter under my roof. Quoting this man's words. And as we look at that, uh, first of all, what does it mean to be under someone's roof? You know, before the old words were, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you. It's one of the changes in the Mass a dozen or so years ago. And uh, to uh, have someone under our roof basically means they see everything, you know. They're not just a casual visitor for a few minutes, they're under our roof. So uh, what we hid in the closet, you know, is going to come tumbling out someday when he opens the door. To, to, to have somebody under our roof, you know, really repl- uh, implies a, a closeness, a familiarity, a welcomeness. And so the first image we're given is that uh, the Lord is to be under our roof. Uh, to see everything, uh, the good as well as the bad, the successful as well as the failure. And so we first uh, look to those words uh, in Advent, how do we really, truly put the Lord under our roof to allow Him to see all. But we know in this passage and in another about the same centurion, is we also hear that this man, uh, the people appealed for him, You know, Lord, he deserves this. He even helped build our temple. Man of great compassion. In that other passage, as well as this one, 
In this one we hear, as we do in the other, that he is not asking for anything of his own, but asking on behalf of other, on his servant. Man of great compassion. So as we celebrate Advent, really a reminder that we're to be of great compassion. In the very uh, center of our mind, heart, and soul, under our roof, is to be that gift of compassion to see the need of other to act in the name of Christ. So we pray for that grace to reveal all to Christ under our roof and under that roof to be people of great compassion. We think about that as we turn, we offer our needs, our intentions to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we do come before you desiring always for you to be under our roof in word and in sacrament. We pray for that grace to truly be people of compassion. Please hear now our needs and petitions. Help us on our way. For our church throughout the world that uh, we strive during this season of Advent to uh, be people of compassion, to allow Christ into every facet of our lives. We pray to you, Lord, for all of those in the RCIA process, particularly for Ashley and our parish preparing for baptism as we received her yesterday in the right, so that as she prepares these months looking towards Easter, towards her baptism, may be filled with grace and wisdom and a closeness with Christ. We pray to you, Lord, for all who are ill in any way, particularly the rising numbers of those suffering with the coronavirus for their healing, for those undergoing surgeries or medical tests for their healing, for those suffering with long-term or chronic problems for their hope, too, in the power of healing. For all in need of healing in body, mind, or in spirit, we pray to you, Lord. And for our seminarians at St. Mary's in Baltimore, for all in discernment of priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, for their courage to come forward and serve, we pray to you, Lord. And for ourselves and all baptized throughout the world that this season of Advent may be a time to not only reflect on our lives and offer penance, but also to rejoice in the coming of our Savior for that gift to look to the future filled with hope as well as to bring correction and change to the present moment. We pray to you, Lord. And for Muriel Foy, for whom the Mass is offered, and for all the souls of the faithful departed to share in God's mercy and eternal life, we pray to you, Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you these needs and intentions. Humbly we ask once again, please, hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be 
acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna on the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we we'll bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles. Thank Gregory the Great and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away these sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Two things. One will pray the prayer for renewal. But uh, a reminder that Thursday is the penance service. Uh, somehow was omitted from the bulletin. And uh, so do know this Thursday is the penance service at 7 o'clock. And uh, spread the word. Now don't go up to people and say you need to go to confession. That may not be the nicest thing to say. But uh, probably accurate. We all do need to go. So do please uh, pass that word along. Our prayer for renewal. In every age, O oh God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news. Celebrate your saving presence among us. Serve others with charity and justice. And steward the world you've entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a good day, everyone. Angel, send us in battle.